Welcome to How to Play Chaos Knights in Warhammer 40,000 10th Edition. Hi, I'm Jake from Vanguard Tactics. I'm joined today with Michael Costello. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm looking forward to talking about some of these behemoths of chaos. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what the Chaos Knights can do in Warhammer 40,000 10th Edition. But before we do that, we do have to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to Games Workshop because without them, we wouldn't have our preview copies of the indexes and the cards to be able to go through really get you know get mm -hmm. to grips with them and to be able to give you this content so obviously if you do like what we do leave a like and a comment and let's just get straight into it michael yes let's so, do it the army rule the army rule is harbingers of dread and what does this do okay so there's um two stages to this uh, if you played the previous edition remember there was there was like a whole chart you had to go through oh. this is a little simple okay. much simpler um so from battle round one onwards okay you get a despair aura Okay. which means that enemy units that take battle shock or leadership tests within 12 inches of any of your Chaos Knights suffer a minus one to those rolls. Okay, pretty, pretty simple. Simple, more effective than you might expect. Yeah. From about around three onwards, each time a Chaos Knight from your army makes an attack, um, if the target's battle shocked, you get plus one a wound. Oh, wow. And if a battle shocked model attacks one of your knights, they're minus one to hit. Okay, pretty strong that. Very simple, but pretty strong. Having that battle shock manipulation along with if you are battle shocked, you get bonuses or debuffs. Yep. Um, another keyword to note. So we've got super heavy walker, which means each time um, one of the towering models makes a move, uh, advance or fall back, they can move over models, excluding okay. titanic ones and terrain features that are four inches or less in height. Uh, as if they were not there. Oh, amazing. Okay, pretty simple, pretty nifty. Pretty cool. And if you are a Chaos Army, you can include um, Chaos Knights in your army um, as a, a Dreadblade. But that's not what we're here for. No. We're here to learn how to play Chaos Knights. Yes. Right, so, Michael, let's now have a look at the detachment rule for the Chaos Knights. What is it? It's Forged in Terror. So this means that in your opponent's command phase, during their Battleshock step, Okay. They're going to have to take Battleshock tests for any units that are below starting strength instead of just below half strength. Now, of course, you combine this with their army rule, that's going to be at minus one as well. Okay. Okay, so there's um, this is very dangerous. Yes, it, yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of Battleshock potentially happening here. Yeah, um, I've, I've sort of starting to notice a theme with the old Chaos Knights with that bit mm -hmm. of battle shot manipulation. Yeah. Um, that is very strong. Like you could have a wound taken on your vehicle, let's say, exactly. or one model lost out of a unit, and you're going to have to take that test. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I do, uh, yeah, quite it's, devastating. It's pretty right? scary, actually. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But before we continue, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, The Outpost. If you're looking for a great deals on your miniatures, paints and gaming supplies, you, we've got you covered. Their wide variety of exceptional service makes them the go-to destination for all hobby needs. So don't wait, check out The Outpost today. Link in the description below. So Michael, the enhancements next. Yeah. What? So we've got four like every army does in the yeah. edition. Um, so talk me through them. Okay, so the very first one is Lord of Dread. At the start of the fight phase, you can pick an enemy unit with an engagement range. They have to take a battle shock test. Okay, pretty simple. It's okay. Um, I would expect this to be one of the cheaper ones, um, and I'd use it to fill out a list. Okay. But I wouldn't necessarily. It's not one I'm going to jump straight towards. So it's not like an auto take. It's not an auto take. No. Unlike this next one, oh, okay. which for me is an auto take. Okay. So aura of terror. Yeah. All right. Um, now I'm going to sum this up because it's. It, yeah, it, it's quite, it's quite wordy. wordy. <laughs> um, so essentially, if you control an objective marker at the end of your command phase and the bearer is within range, that objective marker is said to be tainted uh, and remains under your control even if you have no models there. So you essentially get this sticky objectives is what's commonly okay. called. Um, so you're going to control that objective even if you move off it. Yeah. In addition, whilst the objective marker is tainted and under your control, um, and the despair dread ability, which is the one you get from the first turn onwards, um, is active for your army. Then um, you subtract one from the battle shock tests and leadership tests for enemy units within 12 inches of it as if it was a Chaos Knight. 
Okay, wow, okay. So it essentially becomes a Chaos Knight's aura yeah. on that objective marker. So we've we've seen a mechanic quite similar to this in the Death Guard mm -hmm. um, with the Contagion, mm -hmm. but that sounds pretty decent. To be able to stick in the objective of an army with not a lot of models, yes. and like you said, is one of your auto-includes, that yes, is that's really why. good. I'm, I'm not so fussed about the other part of it. Yeah. Um, if anything, it makes it a little more complicated. No, but... Um, but the the sticky aspect is fantastic because you're only going to have um, a limited number of models, potentially eight models only on the table. Yeah. So being able to move away um, with one of them is is worth paying yeah. whatever this costs, and this yeah. is an expensive one. Yeah, so it's put in like the value sense. You could literally have just stopped at sticky objective. And exactly. You still exactly. Would if this is 30 points, hmm. then I would have happily paid for a 30-point unit to sit on that objective all game. Okay. Now I don't have to. Nice. Um, so moving on, we've got, mm -hmm. what is the next one? Actually, I don't know. Um, the, the next one's Traitor's Mark. Uh, and what this means is the effect um, that happens in the third battle round for the bearer happens from the first battle round instead. Okay, so, lead, so let two turns Essentially, forward. let two turns forward. It means that your unit is going to get plus one to wound against battleshocked units. Yeah. And any battleshocked units are going to have to subtract one from their hit rolls when targeting your unit, the bearer. Uh, it's okay. Wow, okay. yeah. this is um, you're not that close to the enemy at this stage, turn one and two, so you may not be triggering that many battle shock tests. I guess, like, if you had points spare, it could be nice. Yeah, this um, next one, though, Jake. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We may not have one, any points spare. The next one you're paying for, okay? Okay. Um, so, Panoply of the Cursed Knights. Um, this one, each time an attack's made against the bearer, subtract one from the armor penetration characteristic of that attack. So, an inbuilt armor of content. On a knight for the entire game. On a 22 wound on toughness 12, three up armor save knight for the entire game. That is going straight in the basket. Okay. Both of those that I've mentioned. So we've got two really decent enhancements there. So yep. we may not even have any points spare. Um, yeah, I completely agree with you. That is really, really solid. And I think you pretty much expect it. What, who, who would you sort of put that on? A big one or a little one? Um, Probably a big one. So the, so you can only put on the big ones. Oh, okay. uh, that's a really important point to cover, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, the big knights all have the character keyword. So they're the only ones that can have The little answer. ones can't get character in any way. And they're not characters okay. either. So you can only ever give an enhancement to a big knight. Okay. Um, and you 100% would, of course, with these. Okay, that's cool. I didn't actually know that because yeah. before it used to be that you would have one and then you'd pay. Yeah, you could make for... someone a character and it could be one of the little ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. That's really cool. So I guess we'll move on to stratagems. Let's take a moment to appreciate Colorforge, our fantastic sponsor. Their range of spray paints has become our go to for making our miniatures come to life quickly and efficiently. The quality and variety of colors they offer are truly unmatched providing a smooth application for stunning effects every time check out colorforge for your next hobby project yes let's have a look at some stratagems there's one that i, I think is both of our favorites because it's one that you know what it does well um should we talk about that one first if we have to <laughs> so it's terror shades yeah oh, oh i remember yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, I like that. Here's a stratagem that you used to use when you used Blake House Knights. My one, um, yeah, my one five game stint, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so one command point. Any phase, just after an enemy unit fails a Batshock test. Okay. So um, you target one Chaos Knights unit within 12 inches of that enemy unit, and you roll six dice for each four plus. That enemy unit suffers one more wound. Yes. And this model regains up to one lost wound. For each mortal wound? For each 4+. plus, The mortal wound doesn't even have to go through. So if you had a feel, feel no pain rule against it, um, you could still get a wound back from it. Yeah. Um, that seems pretty good. Not I, good. You're going to use that a lot. Yeah. With this army and the way that the Battleshock works, you save your command points in the pocket for this. Knights getting potentially six wounds back is absolute madness when they're so hard to kill. Well, imagine that minus one AP knight mm. is also now backed up with I'm regaining my wounds and yep. also doing mortals. Like, it's not even like I'm just regaining wounds or I'm yep. just doing mortals. It's both. That is... Very good. Yeah, I just... Yeah. Very, like, yeah. very one good. One CP. One command point. Yep. Surely in every turn strat. Probably, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what else is there? We've got Dread Hounds, uh, so you use this start your shooting phase or start the fight phase, and you pick two or more War Dog units um, and one enemy unit, which is an elig eligible target for those War Dog units. Okay. Till the end of the phase, um, those War Dog units gain sustained hits one okay, against yeah. that target. That's good. 
Um, and in addition, if that enemy unit's battle shocked, um, then they get critical hits on fives to hit. So to confirm, the sustained hits now will trigger on fives. That's right. Than the against the battle shock target. Yeah. Cool. That's good, isn't it? This is really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very good strat. One command point. Yeah. Um, we've got disdain for the weak. So in the fight phase, just after an enemy unit has selected its targets, okay. you select your Chaos Knight that was one of those targets. Um, you gain Feel No Pain 6 plus. Yeah. If the enemy unit is battle shocked, Feel No Pain 5 plus against their attacks. Okay, yeah. Um, again, seems really good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All of Solid. These, yeah, one command these, point. All of these right. seem good, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we have a long leash. This is one command point. In your command phase, you select one abhorrent class unit, uh, which is going to be one of these big, big boys. Yeah. And up to three war dog models from your army. Okay? okay. Until the start of your next command phase, those three war dogs are treated as if they were in the aura range of any aura abilities that one of those that that abhorrent model has. Okay. So. Um, I, the, I don't really know what the. The auras desecrator are. has an aura for real ones to hit. Oh, okay, cool. Um, for shooting. Yeah. So you could trigger that on. All three war dogs. Okay, okay. yeah. Um, just anywhere they are on the battlefield. Okay, yeah. Well, with, with that's that a, perspective, that's, a really, that's good. It's yeah. really good. It's okay. really good. And there's only one command point as well. Nice one. So, very strong, strong stratagem. Knights of Shade is next. This is one command point. Um, you can pick up to two war dogs or one Titanic Chaos Knight unit. Uh, and they can, until the end of the phase, move horizontally through models and terrain features as if they were not there. <laughs> So it flies. Sort well, of. better than better flies. Better than fly because it fly... just moves horizontally. Yeah. Rather than having to go up and down, yes. you're just going through. You literally <laughs> ignore what's in the way. Okay. Um, One command point. Surely that that's that's great. Oh, it's fantastic. Surely. That is fun. You cannot move block these guys. Which is Not great. Not even using terrain. Yeah. But that's great, right? Because yeah. I feel that was a strat that you really needed for Chaos Knights. Yeah, exactly. Just, just because where you don't have a lot of models, you mm -hmm. have to argue that there has to be some give and take. Yeah. Um, and I think that is a great give. Yeah, and absolutely. And I don't think they've taken anything for it. No, <laughs> no. So, um, great. And then the last one, Diabolic Bulwark. Uh, so one command point in your shooting phase, after you've been targeted, uh, you select your Chaos Knight, and it has um, a 4 plus invulnerable save against ranged attacks till the end of the phase. Decent. It was. We had Pretty that. We've seen that. Standard. Yeah, that's your like standard strat. But yeah, they all those strats seem great, Michael. To they're honest. all fantastic stratagems. Um, they're all one command point, which is how we like it. Um, yeah, solid, solid. Nice. Um, should we take a look at some data sheets then? Let's do it. Nice. With the release of Warhammer 40,000 10th edition, at Vanguard Tactics, we've put together the perfect course for you. If you're already playing 9th edition, but you want to seamlessly transition into the new edition, leave behind everything you know about 9th and understand everything you need to know about 10th, then this short course is going to be ideal. We break down all the complexities and give you step-by-step -step guidance on how to really make the most from 10th edition. We're going to help you understand all the basics of the game and then some top tips along the way to help you really get the most from your army and your playing experience. And if that's something you want to do and get signed up on our short course, which you can study in your own time, then do check out the links below and get signed up to our Accelerator program. So we'll start with the Knight Desecrator. Okay. Um, this one is the chain sword slash fist and the sort of laser cannon. Okay. So um, this this one here, which yes, is the, uh, yeah. the one in front of you. Uh, so obviously all the knights, they're going to have the same profile here, so I'll just read the profile. 10 inch move, toughness 12, 3 plus save, 22 wounds, 6 plus leadership, OC 10. Oh, wow, Big OC boys. 10. OC 10. Okay. Um, yeah, these guys can hold objectives and if you're sneaky, they can contest multiple objectives potentially because you count for the level of control when you go to each objective. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's a nice little mechanic there. So you can really do a bit of tricks there with that. Yeah, so their OC is really, really useful. So this guy's got two abilities. Uh, one I did mention earlier. Um, so while a friendly war dog model is within nine inches of this model, um, they can reroll ones to hit for their range attacks. Okay, which again, like we said earlier, you could use that long leash and make it just free. Exactly. Them out just give way. three units. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. Um, its other one is each time it makes a ranged attack against a monster or vehicle, that attack has the Devastating Wounds ability. Okay. Oh, wow, okay. Let's talk about its gun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a crater laser destroyer, okay. has a 72 inch range. Uh, it sounds quite scary. Three right? shots. Oh god. Hits on twos. Strength 18, AP4, D6 plus 3 damage. 
And of course, against a monster vehicle, that's devastating wounds. So if you roll a critical wound of a six, mm -hmm. that is just going to be damage as well. Six plus three mortal wounds. Wow. Well, even if you don't get a devastating wound, in, it's still, that's still so good. deadly. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, really decent. You you were to expect that, though, from a tank. You know, this is, yeah. it seems like the tank killing knight. If it's got one gun, I want it to be reliable. And this is a reliable gun. Three shots hitting on twos. Yeah. Damage D6 plus three. I like I it. I think you've hit the nail right on the head there, Mike. Yep. You know, you want your weapons that on these models that you're paying so many points for to be reliable. Mm -hmm. And I 100% agree with you. That is a very reliable gun. Yep. Um, I'll talk about the weapon options because we, you know, say we mention them later when we talk about oh, the rampager. Okay. Cool. Um, but the chainsword, um, obviously, both of these have strikes and sweeps. Yeah. The chainsword offers you um, lower strength but higher AP. Okay. Pretty much the same number of attacks from the strikes. Um, so the the claw comes in at strength 20, um, whereas the chainsaw is strength 14. Okay. Okay, so you either have higher strength mm -hmm. or a bit more versatile. A bit more AP. Okay. What, what would you go if, if it was you? Um, you so think? they both have a sweep. Oh, okay. Which oh, are actually quite significantly different. So the chainsaw has 12 attacks with the sweep. Yeah. Um, it's higher AP, but only damage 2. Okay, okay. The claw has only 8 attacks. Um, but it comes in at higher strength, less AP, but flat three damage. Okay, so if we were to maths that, they, they, they actually both do the same amount of damage total, right? Yeah. So that's interesting to note. Um, but you said one's higher AP but less damage, the other's mm -hmm. lower AP but more damage. Mm -hmm. um, that's quite interesting. I don't... I think the sword is probably where I, I want to go. I was going to say that higher AP seems with the AP. a rarity in this edition, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. So what's next, Michael? Well, this is my favourite one, the Knight Rampager, oh. okay, the Combat Knight. Uh, same stat line, except it moves 12 inches instead of 10. So okay. So a bit, bit faster. faster. Yeah. Um, uh, and this guy has Bloodlust, so each time it makes a charge move. Till the end of the turn, uh, its melee weapons have the sustained hits one ability. Okay, so every critical hit is an additional hit. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. In addition, once per battle, oh, no. it can advance and charge. Wow, okay. So, again, it moves 12, could go D6. So, maximum 18, then a charge, and comboing that stratagem that allows you just to move through things horizontally yes. is... Oh, yeah. That's pretty scary. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Wow, okay. Literally rampaging into you. Mm -hmm. right? so, um, yep. And uh, it does have sustained hits one. I'm not sure it needs it. Um, um, maybe just to make it a bit more consistent, because it well, it's a it's a big combat knight. You know, these mm. things are a premium, right? So yes. it's good to see that it's got an extra rule in there. Now, um, I mentioned the stats from the chain swords and the uh, fist. Okay. They are the same except the number of attacks. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, and this guy hits on twos in combat, of course. Oh, okay, cool. So he gets six base attacks with the sword or the fist, okay. whereas most normal knights get four. Okay. Uh, his sweep with the chainsword is 18 attacks. <laughs> okay. With, of course, sustains its one on the charge. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, or 12 with the fist. Uh, and, of course, you've got both weapons on the rampage, so you can pick based on yeah. the target. I was going to say, that. yeah, that, that's the other thing. We don't need to make the choice with this no. guy. You um, just whenever it depends what you're fighting, really. Yeah. Um, it has one more ability, oh, um, which it? is <laughs> <laughs> war dogs within nine can reroll ones to hit for melee attacks. Oh, okay, cool. So, so it's Death kind of, it was the shooty, shooty right. version. This is the combat version. Really yep. nice to see that they do benefit war dogs as well now. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. I'm it, a big fan. These now in this edition, you want to take the big knights. They're yeah. good. They're good. They're they seem, really good. They seem they're, they're more really good. strong. Yeah. Um, and yeah, tank shock. Oh yeah. We may as well add that to the list of stratagems available to the army <laughs> because tank shock. Um, after you charge with a, a vehicle, you can pick one of their melee weapons. Let's say a strength twenty fist. Your number of dice equal to the strength of that weapon. Yeah. Plus two if that strength is above the toughness of the target, which at strength twenty it's going to be. So that you're going to roll twenty two dice, and each five. Um, or six is going to be a mortal wound to a cap of six on the target. Oh, okay, but let's be honest, with that many dice, we're probably just going to do six mortal wounds. It's probably wounds, just yeah. six mortal wounds. I think, which I think is that's fair. Excellent. It's not unreasonable to say excellent. that. Excellent. And you could yeah. then force your opponent to a battle shot test with the enhancement. Oh, yeah, of course. Which would be at minus one. Yes. And then you could play the Terra Shade strat. Oh. <laughs> and then that could do up to six mortal wounds with the 
the rolling of oh, no. the fours and then and it, heal you. if there's actually anything left after all that you get plus mm. one yeah, to yeah. We 18 hit. attacks with oh, yeah, yeah. strength <laughs> Okay, let's yeah. move on. Um, the Knight Abominant. The Bobbinant. My, my Knight Bobbinant. Bobbinant. He. This is actually my favourite knight. Yeah. Um, I've always loved how he looks. So tell me, Michael, are we taking him in our tenth edition game? He is an auto include. Oh, good. Okay. okay cool. Um, okay. So his good. abilities. He's got two psychic abilities. The first one is at the start of your shooting phase, you pick an enemy unit within 12 inches and you force them to take a battle shock test. Okay, at that minus one. At that minus you're one, because no within 12 inches. And yep. if they fail that, you can You use... can do terror shades, oh. you can do whatever you want. This army, if you can get battle shock test done outside of just the uh, battle shock step, you are winning. Okay. Like these are the power you get from fighting battle shot units is, is incredible. Um, the other ability is at the end of the movement phase, yeah. you roll a d6 for each enemy unit within nine inches. Oh God. On a three plus, they take d3 mortal wounds. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. an aura of yeah. d3 mortal wounds on threes after you've moved. Yeah. Um, wow. wow. Wowzers. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Um, ranged weapons, does he have any weapons? Does he need yeah, any weapons? Yeah, he's got some weapons <laughs> too. Okay. So, Volkite Combustor. Okay. Devastating wounds. Okay. Okay, so let's see what it does. Um, nine shots, mm -hmm. threes to hit, strength 12, AP zero, fat three damage. Oh. With okay. devastating wounds. Okay, but with devastating with wounds. With devastating wounds, that okay. is potentially um, very scary. Yeah, the no AP is a bit sad, but equally yeah. you have devastating wounds, we can't have it all. Like, no, and, and it's exactly. still nine shots, flat three, like every wound you're getting through if you do fail a save is still going to be... It's a lot of damage. And not to be devastating. Like, yes. <laughs> and then if you roll a six, you just don't have to worry about that save step. So, yeah, yeah. really decent there. Yeah. Good, got a good combat profile. Yeah, there, it's got it? that extra attack with its tail, um, but its Electro Scourge is sustained hits one, okay. nine attacks, yeah. strength 10, AP two, flat damage three. Um, so it is, you know, the, if any of these knights touches you, they're going to do a lot of damage in combat. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the strength of their weapons is now sort of... Uh, graduated with the toughness of vehicles and monsters in the yeah. current edition. Yeah, and the other thing that's interesting as well, there's something I want to quickly note about Knights, is how bracketing has sort of changed yeah. as by the fact of it's not as devastating when he's on half wounds. It's only actually on... on only, yeah. What, what's One the... to seven wounds remaining. Yeah. You subtract five from their OC characteristics, so yeah. that is pretty significant. That is quite significant. Um, and you subtract one from their hit rolls. Okay, but like still overall, like if we were to look at the ninth edition or anything like that, like that's not that bad. Like in comparison, no, you don't lose any movement, you don't no. lose any attacks or, or strength, strength or anything, ability to hit. Like yeah, exactly. I still think that. Well, obviously you lose a minus yeah, one to hit. Yeah, you minus one to hit. But, but before you would be like on fives in some instances. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, really love that. Um, is that all we've got to talk about? That's we the got big knights. Um, I'll run through a few of the little ones because they are going to be the majority of your army. Yes. Yeah. So um, so my personal favourite. The War Dog Brigand. Okay. This is the one with two shooty weapons, so a chain gun and a um, thermal spear or de demon's breath spear. Okay. Um, so the highlight on this one, I'm not going to go through the weapons, the chain cannons, lots of shots, low strength AP, the thermal is basically a melter, it's got melter four, so lots of damage. Uh, each time this model makes a range attack that targets the closest illegible enemy unit, improve the AP characteristic of those attacks by one. Okay, nice. Again, AP manipulation seems really good. Exactly. So though. the chain cannon goes to AP two yeah. with that. Um, and this guy's ballistic skill on all his weapons are two plus. Oh, okay. And with, oh, with our Knight Desecrator, that means he's hitting on twos, rerolling ones. Mm. Okay. That's cool. consistency. Yeah. Very, very good. Um, the stat line for all of these war dogs is a 12 inch move, toughness 10, three plus save, 12 wounds each. Okay, nice. Uh, OC eight. Okay, cool. Well, that's really good, actually. I wasn't expecting OC8. I was mm. thinking maybe OC5 or something, mm. like we've seen previously, but yeah, really OC8 decent. is really strong on these. Uh, it just messes with objectives so hard because a five-man unit, or let's say it's five, let's take Space Marines, five Terminators and a character, one single War Dog is going to out-OC that. Yeah, no, really good. Really, really big fan of that. So next up, we've got the Stalker. Yeah. The Stalker gets plus one to wound against an enemy unit if that enemy unit's not within six inches of any other friendly units. Nice. Cool. Of any other of its friendly units. Oh, okay. So if that it's on sense. its own. If it's on its own in your opponent's army, not with any other units from your opponent's army. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so plus one wound. That's very nice. Uh, and then the Carnivore. Uh, the Carnivore just gets reroll charges okay. as its ability, um, but it 
packs a punch. Yeah. So it's got those six attacks with its chain talon, um, strength 10, AP3, flat three damage. Ooh. More importantly, hitting on twos. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, and then the claw is strength 12 with D6 plus two damage. Okay. Um, and it's got sweep as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, that seems really good. Again, the Night Rampage of being able to give it the reroll ones in combat, mm -hmm. I see pretty good. Um, yeah, I think um, the only other thing I have to sort of ask is mission-wise, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what are we sort of thinking how they're going to play? Do you think they're going to benefit from the fixed or the tactical? Um, I think knights naturally um, gravitate towards the fixed because there's less of them. Yeah. So doing the action things is difficult. However, they are vehicles and therefore are eligible to shoot while they're in engagement range of yes. enemy units. So there is the potential that they can still do some of those tactical missions that require them to be eligible to shoot. Okay. The army as a whole, I think you're going to see a lot, lot of big knights, yeah. uh, maybe up to five little knights, um, but it's a very cohesive force, and you're going to be forcing lots of battle shock tests onto your opponent. Yeah, nice one. Well, Michael, thank you so much for walking me through the Chaos Knights. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing them on the table. Guys, if you have enjoyed the video, again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe comment about what you're looking forward to with Chaos Knights. Uh, maybe if you're not looking forward to playing them. I know I'm not. Um, and also what sort of night list you'll maybe come up with. And we will see you again in another Vanguard Tactics video soon.